Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell. And here we are with another collection. This is gonna go from May of 1995 up to April of 1996. So this is gonna be kind of the final stretch. I think the book ended around in 1997. So there's only one more collection video after this one. And I gotta be honest, I thought this stack would be a little bit smaller than our previous episode, but it's actually a little bigger. Um, look at that. That's uh, almost, a, almost a full inch or more so I would say maybe like eight or nine comics, maybe 10 comics, or possibly even a dozen the, uh, more books in this year than the previous year. And that surprised me because I thought the stacks got smaller and smaller. But then I realized, oh, wait, this is the year where they had a crossover uh, with another company. So I think there's a couple issues in here of that. Uh, then there's also, um, you know, I, I think, I, maybe I'm, I'm blanking, like with the ballistic stuff, maybe we already covered that, I can't remember. So those might be in here. Um, but then there's also like the, the Over the Edge storyline. That was a big Marvel storyline that came out. So I think I have a couple issues of Over the Edge in here as well. Uh, so yeah, so we're obviously we're going to start off with Betrayals Part 4 because that's where we ended the last episode. Well, we actually ended on Speed Demon number one from the Amalgam Universe, but they never did anything after that with Speed Demon. So, you know, there was nothing else to talk about, unfortunately. But I would love to see the Amalgam Universe come back at some point and see Speed Demon because or just create a Ghost Rider villain who's fast, like Speed Demon, and call him Speed Demon, because who cares? Like, I don't know if it's copywritten that it has to be an amalgam character, but, uh, you know, spell speed a different way. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I just, I just loved it. I loved, a, a, you know, a, a quickster uh, superhero character with the, you know, the powers of Ghost Rider. I thought that was just cool. So again, the betrayal of uh, Danny Ketch kind of continues here um, with his, his friend who became a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. She's holding his head there. It's a cool cover. I don't think that actually happens in the book but it's just still it's still a cool cover so but he is captured so the next storyline is called ghost rider in chain starting with issue 62 that was issue 61 we just talked about and so this is you know ghost rider being um you know contained in a way uh, by shield and so uh, so yeah he's pretty much in a machine for some of this but he does break out because there's a scarecrow fight so in issue 64 he's got to battle the scarecrow um, which is great i love that artwork looks really cool um, and then here in issue 60, so this is crazy. So issue 64 says In Chains Part 3. Issue 65 says Over the Edge on the cover. And I remember going, whoa, 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 whoa. am I missing an issue? And if I am too, like I read it, it this seems like it's part four of In Chains, but it just got the banner of Over the Edge. As you can see, it's a beat up copy. It's got a lot of dings in it. Um, this one I just found in like a quarter bin somewhere. And I was like, I gotta have it. It's, you know, I'm missing it for my issues. Cause after issue 65 here or around issue 60 and onward, the thing about the, the book is the sales dropped. So they printed less copies of them. So when you're trying to complete a collection, the, you know, especially a nineties collection, they overprinted a ton of stuff in the nineties. So for most collections, you can find them like slingers and a couple other things like green goblin, you know, the Philip Urich green goblin and, uh, and heroes for hire. Some of my favorite books from the nineties, thunderbolts, they printed a ton of those books. So you can find a lot of them. Um, at least the earlier issues. same with generation X, the X-Men book. I love that book too. You can find the earlier, the first like 20, 30 issues for some of those that, that lasted that long. Anyway, you can find them really easily after that the books stopped selling and they started printing less and less copies. So by the time we get to this point in Ghost Rider, it, it gets harder. And I think after issue 70, that's another 70 to 80 is really hard to find. And then 80 to 90 is really hard to find because most versions you find are going to be in pretty good condition because it's by hardcore collectors who bought them and they sell them for like, you know, 30, 40 bucks an issue sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's crazy. Sometimes you can find people who don't really know what they have. And like I did, I found issue 70 to 85. It was like a, a bundle of them. And the guy sold them to me for 20 bucks. Now granted, they weren't all in the best condition, but still for 20 bucks for 15 of the hardest issues of the book to find, I thought it was a steal. So um, Over the Edge, this is the big crossover that Marvel was going through where it's basically Punisher wants to kill Nick Fury. And not only that, but he successfully does it. <laughs> he actually, because it's the Punisher. That's my favorite thing about the Over the Edge storyline. It had these little tie-ins, but they also did like a monthly book, which we'll show here in a second. Because um, first they did, of course, Double Edge. You know, it's a, they have to do like a maximum clonage, you know, Alpha and Omega kind of thing. So they did it with a Chrome cover, X-Men, you know, um, Alpha and Omega, Chrome cover, Prime, you know, whatever. So this was... Um, Punisher, Rampage, Double Edge. This is part of Over the Edge storyline. This is where it begins, essentially. So technically, this should go 
before the issue. So we'll do that. I'll, I'll fix them right here. Um, so we have double the edge here, alpha. Yeah, you can see it right there, alpha. And uh, and this one, Punisher basically, I think he's brainwashed or he learns a secret of Nick Fury's or something along those lines. And he's like, all right, I basically have to kill Nick Fury. And it's like, okay. So normally when you start a story like this, you're like, well, he's not going to do it. You know, like you, you usually as editors and writers, you sit around and go, okay, well, he's going to have this mission, but we can't actually have him kill Nick Fury. Marvel straight up has him kill Nick Fury. <laughs> I think later they say it's a life model decoy or something like that. But at least at this point in time, he full on goes in to kill Nick Fury and he actually successfully does it, uh, which is pretty neat. So, uh, so, so good on you, Punisher, for, for accomplishing your goals, man. Um, that's what I, I feel like. You got to do that with Punisher every now and again. Like you got to have him interact in the superhero universe and you have to actually have him do something. Like otherwise he's, he's pointless. Like if you just have him... Uh, killing nameless mob bosses all the time. Like, I love, love the Garth Ennis stuff, but, you know, Garth Ennis had him in his own pocket, you know, where he was just fighting mob bosses. And I'm like, that's great. But every now and again, he has to dip in the Marvel Universe and affect it in some way. And to me, it's like, it's what's really easy to do is have him go in and kill, like, a character like Jack-O-Lantern, you know, or something like that, you know, or you have him do do something. Kill Mr. Hyde or kill, you know, kill Scarecrow, whatever. Like, he, he, you got to have him do something uh, and just have him do it every once in a while. But this was big because it was Nick Fury. So uh, so here you can see them fighting on the cover. This is Omega, Double Edge Omega, the death of, and then when you flip it around, it says Nick Fury. So, um, so yeah, so this is Punisher actually blasting through heroes, bla blasting through S.H.I.E.L.D. agents and getting his way to Nick Fury and actually doing the job. So after this, there was a, a book that came out of Punisher book where in the first issue, he was put in the electric chair in the very first issue. And you're just like, okay. And I think Tom Lyle drew it and it was like uh, rest in peace, Tom Lyle. And he, but he was like, you're, you're like, wait, the first issue, he's going to go in the electric chair. So what happens in issue two? Uh, so that's what I, I like stories like that. And I think John Ostrander might've wrote that. I can't remember, but anyway, that's a Punisher story for another day. Uh, so we have blackout return in this one. So this is now after over the edge and we have issue 86, of, uh, or 68, I'm sorry, 66 of Ghost Rider, 66. Uh, will he uh, will he kill to stop a killer? And that's the thing is like Ghost Rider, I don't know. I, I, didn't, I never saw him as someone who had a moral compass in that regard. Like, yes, Danny and the demon in him would sometimes go, you know, like not, it wasn't like a symbiote relationship, like Venom, but there would be a back and forth on Danny. All right, this person did something bad. Should I kill them? Usually he would hit him with a pen and stare and that would just make him comatose which is pretty dark in my opinion as well. Like if you had Spider-Man going around paralyzing people um, and putting them in comas, beating them into the head until they go into a coma, that wouldn't be very heroic either. So to me, Ghost Rider's always lived in that gray to where I never saw it as, oh, you know, he has a, a line, but they did write him that way sometimes. Like they wanted him to be heroic. And so there were times where he wouldn't kill. But to me, I mean, I don't know. Well, demons he killed all the time, but like, you know, someone like Blackout, um, you know, he, he might've struggled with because he's like, well, there's a human in there somewhere. And it's like, eh, maybe, uh, but he's a vampire. <laughs> so it's okay. <laughs> um, so you have Ghost Rider here, uh, number 67 guest starring Gambit. And this is a sequel to the brood feud, uh, which is something that happened in the like late 20 issues of Ghost Rider. I think, uh, yeah, he teamed up with the X-Men Gambit and Wolverine. They went down to uh, Louisiana to fight the brood. So they did a sequel to that. So Howard Mackey was like, hey, you know, I'm wrapping up my run. I want to kind of do a couple fun things before I go. This is one of those fun things. Uh, Brood Feud Part 2. Then we have Crossroads. Now, this is actually, I think if I'm not mistaken, this might go back here, possibly. So we'll do Brood Feud Part 2, the conclusion. Wolverine shows up and they take down the brood again in Louisiana. So yeah, that was kind of fun. But then you have Crossroads here, which if I'm not mistaken, this might be one of the last issues of Howard Mackey's. Not the last, but one of them. Um, so yeah, so uh, this came out in December. This is called Crossroads and it's just like a giant one shot. And uh, it's, it's pretty neat. I think he wrote this one. I don't know, maybe the new writer, I can't remember. But it's like a one shot storyline, Ghost Writers. Uh, so it has multiple, uh, you know, plot points in it. And um, yes, it was kind of like a one shot. This is a cutout right there. So it's like the paper's burning. And yeah, there's someone behind him, you know, uh, causing him agony, basically. Um, but this was, I think, one of the last things Mackie wrote. Because I know, I think Mackie wrote this one, um, January uh, from issue 69 of Ghost Rider. 
And this, may, maybe that's his last one. I can't remember. One of these is his final issue. <laughs> um, actually, let's open this one up and let's see. Let's see. All right. So who's that behind him? Oh, I can't tell. That's cool. Looks like a Ghost Rider. So there's a couple Ghost Riders on the cover there, as you can see. And this, yeah, starts off with Scarecrow. But who wrote this book? <laughs> there's no, like, uh, credit. Cre look, look at the credits page. There's no, nobody listed there. Yeah. All right. So I think that's Black, uh, Blackheart uh, is, the, is that character with the, yeah, that's Blackheart. Um, so they talk about Zarathos and, and, uh, you know, it's basically, a, a, a Johnny, Johnny Blaze comes back in the story, as you can see there, but this is so weird. There's no, uh, there's no credits. <laughs> like what's, what's the deal, man? Um, so, but it does advertise that coming up, Ivan Velez Jr. is going to be the new artist, a writer. I'm sorry. He's going to take over from Howard Mackey. And then we have, uh, Salvador Larocco. Um, so the adventures of Danny Catch, Johnny Blaze, and the Spirits of Indian continue every month in Ghost Rider. Um, ah, here we go. So yeah, Howard Mackey, Ivan uh, Velez. So Howard Mackey did the story, and Ivan Velez Jr. wrote it. Kerry Nord did the artwork. Um, then you have Bob McLeod, Al Migram, Al Williamson, Mike Witherby. A lot of great people on this. Um, Greg Wright from Malibu. So yeah, so this is the crossroads story of introducing the new writer of Ghost Rider. So this is where Howard Mackey passes the torch uh, in a way by coming up with a story and then Ivan Velez Jr. taking over the writing duties. So yes, and in one of the, in Howard Mackey's last issue, he does write a very nice goodbye in it. He says like, like this one, he scripted it or story did the story and then Ivan scripted it. But the issue before it, when, you know, his last issue, he actually writes a, a proper goodbye. And he says, you know, Danny means everything to him and writing this run has been really great for him. And he's sad to leave but he felt like it was just the right time to go uh, because he just didn't know, I guess, didn't have a feeling of where he would end Danny's story at this point. So it looks like they passed that torch on to Ivan. So Ivan started taking over the book. And this is where um, some of the early stuff that introduced me to Salvador Larocco, who still an artist to this day, um, you know, and this came out in the late, uh, late nineties. So that guy's been doing comics for over 20 years now, like at least at the very least, I, I know he did stuff before Ghost Rider, but like this is what really put him on the map for me because I really like his style. Um, then here we have a Man Thing, Blade, Doctor Strange, and Scarlet Witch, Midnight Suns Unlimited. This is nearing the end too. I think there's only like two or you know three issues left or one or two issues left of this. Um, so they start wrapping this up too because like I said, uh, sales I think were already kind of on the decline. But I think by putting in new blood, they were like, hey, maybe we can revive this. And it goes well for a little bit, but but not for very long. Uh, so. And I don't think that has anything to do with Ivan so much. I just think the general interest in Ghost Rider around this time started to die down for whatever reason. You know, I don't think it had really that much to do with the creative teams in the book, in my personal opinion. Um, but other people might feel differently. So, uh, but yeah, we got a cool cover there by Salvador Rocco. Then we still have Over the Edge is still going on in February. There's still, you know, fallout from it. They did Over the Edge, uh, Marvel Edge series that was like 12 issues or 10 issues i think or maybe it was even nine but each issue had a different character in it uh, so they had like a daredevil issue or two they had a hulk issue i think a spider-man issue so of course they had a ghost Rider issue so i had to get that so you get a little bit more of dan in that storyline um then yeah issue 71 dc versus marvel uh we have issue two here this is uh that's weird i feel like this should I might have some of these out of order. <laughs> that uh, that Speed Demon story probably should be going in this set. So I think it was maybe a mistake to have it at the end of the last episode. Uh, but that's okay. Whatever. I can't I can't do anything about it now. So Marvel Comics versus DC. So after issue two here is when they do the Amalgam Universe because because it's a uh, it's Marvel versus DC one and two, then Amalgam, and then they do DC versus Marvel. You know, so, so yeah, so I think I screwed up by putting Speed Demon back there. That's right. But anyway, he's in this issue briefly too. I think as Ghost Rider and maybe as Speed Demon as well. So, uh, so yeah, so one of those is in the wrong place. So I apologize. Uh, Ghost Rider 72, uh, you know, him teaming up with his friend again, uh, the one who betrayed him, I believe, but she's, you know, they, they kind of worked things out. Uh, I think this is the last issue of Midnight Suns, Ghost Rider from the year 1945. How cool is that? Uh, so yeah, uh, you get Legion of Night also in that issue, but this is pretty neat because you get an old school 
Ghost Rider from like World War II era, which is awesome. Like, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, uh, yeah, I always like seeing who the other spirits of vengeance are. All right, so actually here, I'm seeing that it says May of 1996 on here. So this is actually two years worth. So I'm going to save this, this stack here for the next episode. We're going to, I'm going to record it right after. So we're going to get right into that, and I'll try to put it up as soon as possible after this episode goes up. So I was wrong. So earlier, or I was right earlier when I said each year the stacks get smaller and smaller. This is, uh, you know, from 95 to 96, and this is from 96 to 97. So I just didn't have a divider uh, separating these two. So technically we are at the end. The last issue that came out was uh, in May of, uh, of you know, well, we'll do that one. We'll consider that one as part of the end of the last episode. So Ghost Rider 1945. So that's where we end today is on this episode from this first stack. And then the next episode we're going to pick up uh, in later in May of 1996 with the snow blind issue. So make sure you are stayed subscribed so that you don't miss out. So yeah, again, I, I should have put a divider there. So good. So this stack, it threw me off at first. I was like, wait a minute. No, no, no. This is too much. There, I thought there was less. And there was less in the stack over here on this side. Um, so in this ep the next episode, we will go through this stack and we'll lead you up to 1997. And then after that will be the final episode of this collection, which will lead us into 1998 when the book ended so thank you guys so much for watching this episode as always i do appreciate it let your comments be known down below and we'll continue our conversation down there thanks so much see you in hell peace